Is it true? Is Adrian New really going to go to Ferrari? Oh my gosh, the humanity. I hope so as a Lewis Hamilton, a part-time Lewis Hamilton evangelist. Can you imagine the chaos? Well, Automotor und Sport has reported that one Adrian New was spotted at the Bologna airport. What does this mean, chat? What might this possibly mean? Was he there on holiday? Was the aero goat potentially going over there to speak to Ferrari, having espoused on numerous occasions that one of his dying wishes as an F1 aerodynamicist is to work for the red team? Oh my gosh, the humanity. One of three, remember. One of three. The other two being to work with Lewis Hamilton and potentially Fernando Alonso. And he can tick two of those with one move, can't he? Since Lewis Hamilton, Sir Lewis, Carl Davidson Hamilton will be there as of 2025. The chaos is chaotic. I don't even know how to make of this, you know. I really, I need to temper my confirmation bias because I really, really want for this to be the truth. I desperately want for it to be true. But we've got to, we've got to understand there's a lot to unpack here. First and foremost... Not all journalistic publications are made equally right. Some you've got to some you've got to give them their credence. Some you can trust. Others are just internet journalists. Automotor und Sport as a German publication is one that you can trust. If they publish it, take that to the bank. So I'm not even going to question whether Adrian New was indeed spotted at Bologna. You can take that to the bank super reputable source second what do we know about adrian newey in 2024 because it's getting techy gotta set the table here and you can't tell this story without talking about red bull and what's been going on there currently auto auto motor sport auto motor and sport tell this story in their article hitherto Christian Horner's allegations has been an absolute bombshell at an otherwise stasis team. Nothing was going to change. Everything was hunky-dory. Dominance and success breed dominance and success. Everybody was super relaxed. You hear Max Verstappen in the car. He sounds each and every single time he comes over the radio as if he's having a Sunday afternoon drive. Everybody's super relaxed. Christian Horner has his shoulders back. He is, of course, in his pump until the bombshell drops that these allegations have absolutely could potentially destroy the stasis, the peace and tranquility that was Red Bull as at January 2024. What happened since? Well, we know that there are two factions at Red Bull. On one side, you've got Max Verstappen, Helmut Marko, Joss Verstappen. You've got the guys and girls from Graz, Austria, being Oliver Mintzlaff and Mark Mataschitz. Dietrich, the former, not long deceased, CEO of Red Bull. They're on one side. On the other side, you've got Christian Horner and the Thai 51% owners, the Avija family, who, of course, as Christian Horner is Red Bull team principal, the Avija family feel they see Christian Horner as an adopted son. But for that, I would bet my life that Christian Horner would no longer be team principal. They would have got rid of him because Austria, Mintzlaff, Mataschitz, desperately wanted to and again on the back of all this stuff that's going on in the background right being lest we forget christian horner desperately was trying to raise finances consulting with various different british financiers around potentially taking f1 technology offline outsourcing lest we forget chat thank you so much nc paddock i'll get to in short order lest we forget that the Thai owners, the 51% Uvidia family, they said that they saw just cause upside potentially from a Red Bull group standpoint to siphon off the F1 technology arm. Ultimately, what does the F1 technology arm, if you ha if you hive them under the same parent, what does that do necessarily for the marketing value of the energy drinks company? You could argue not so much, right? So why not de-risk the odd structure and allow Christian Horner to raise his finance and do what Toto Wolf did and become team principal as well as share owner? 
That's what Christian Horner wants to do. He hates, detests Toto Wolf because he wants what he has. More power, more, more visibility, more influence. There you go. That's the word I'm looking for. Christian, in a sense, was he'll criticise Toto Wolf for being a finance guy, a billionaire finance guy mind christian wants that for himself hence the plans to try and spin off red bull f1 technology as a separate entity from red bull the energy drinks company the tire video family were on board but now all of these allegations throws a massive spanner into those works now while you're far too kind and i will come to them i promise you i promise you go on then what else do we need to know? On the back of that, Max Verstappen now has a secret clause in his contract saying that if Helmut Marko leaves, then I can too. My contract is null and void. And that, ladies and gents, changes absolutely everything. If we all put our Adrian Newey cap on for a second, all he cares about is the ability to hunker down and focus and design a God tier level car. All of that other stuff is lost in the roundings from as far as he's concerned. Lest we forget at Williams, the best thing that Frank Williams ever did was appoint Patrick Head. This isn't me talking. This is Peter Windsor, the legend that is. And he was around at that time managing one Nigel Mansell in appointing Patrick Head. What you could do, what that allowed Adrian Newey to do was silo. Focus on the aero and technical aspect of designing himself a God tier level machine. He doesn't need to be distracted by internal politics or things, other things that he's not concerned with. Leave him alone and he'll design you an era defining car. That's what Frank Williams, that's why Frank Williams even appointed Patrick Head and that allowed Adrian Newey to get on with what he was getting on with right. Hence why he designed one of the most advanced, still probably the most advanced car that we've ever seen in F1 in the FW14. Williams, 93-94, God tier level cars, championship winning in effect, 92-93 even. Mansell and Prost. Fast forward though, what did he do after that? Joined McLaren and again, 99, 98, championship winning. Take that to the bank because he's God tier. He's an absolute God tier aerodynamicist is Adrian Newey. And let me parlay it back for a second because if you read the book, How to Make, How to Build a Car, he tells you all the bloody tricks and secrets. I'm surprised that Mercedes haven't stolen from that playbook yet. 1988, the Leighton House 881. If you want to understand the mindset of one Adrian, you just need to go and read the bloody book. He he went to university and did ground effect as his thesis in sports cars for crying out loud. Hence why there is no one as at 2024 that's more valuable, even including one Max, Max Verstappen. Your MVP currently on the grid in 2024 is Adrian. If you can get him, that unlocks the secret to ground effect cars each and every single time. Parlay that back to 80, 80, 88. The Leighton House 881. How does he know all this stuff? Of course, the uni, the thesis is important, but the Leighton House 881 had a massive brake horsepower deficit. It was one of the only naturally aspirated cars on the grid and had to fight against the turbocharged beasts. How did he do that then? How did he bridge that deficit? What do you think? Aero, each and every single time. Aero. He designed a car that was super aerodynamically efficient, so aerodynamically efficient even, that one Alan Prost, one of the goatiest drivers that you've ever seen, one of the bravest, decided on following Ivan Capelli in that Leighton House 881, going through a high-speed corner. Alan Prost backed off, didn't he? He backed off because he thought Ivan Capelli, there's no way that that car, that Leighton House 881 has enough downforce to take that dude through that corner without him stacking it. Prost was convinced that that dude was going to crash in that car that he'd taken too much speed. That's how aerodynamically efficient. I challenge you, go and check out that Leighton House 881, the March. Go and check out the pictures. And when you see the pictures of that car in 19, 1988 was when Adrian Newey designed that car. When you see the pictures of that car, it looks like it's a blast from the future. 
it looks like an early 90s car or late 90s even it just has that modern day bloody shape and that's who you're dealing with in adrian Newey, a dude who's who's fashioned his reputation no a career even in optimizing for error such that it will bridge a brake horsepower gap that's what the dude's been dealing in all his bloody life Fast forward to McLaren, goes a bit ambitious, designs a car that's not necessarily the most reliable in 98, 99 and early 2000s, but nevertheless can get it across the line. 2005 joins Red Bull again. He's had enough of micromanaging, which is exactly what he was done or what he was on the receiving end of courtesy of one run. Then he's had enough. 2005 Christian says, come over here, man. We'll give you everything you need whatever money you want and we'll leave you alone we know that you're god too we know that you're an mvp a weapons grade aerodynamics crack on mate we're going to leave you alone exactly what patrick head fire frank williams managed to do in the early 90s that's the setup that you need to give adrian new what adrian new isn't concerned with is internal wrangling and politics and for nearly 20 years now, since 2005, that's the circumstance that Red Bull have presented Adrian with. No nonsense. Let's go make your car trap. What do you need? Human resource? You've got it. Money? You've got it. Want to go part time? There you go, mate. Everything he wanted to do right. Free reign. A very long leash until recently. And here's where we loop the circle. Because what Adrian doesn't want to be concerned with is internal politics. He has no time for that. Indeed, he has a good knack of timing when teams are going to descend into this sort of stuff. Financing. Left IndyCar at the perfect time as they were about to become spec cars. Similarly with McLaren. Similarly with March. As he knew, he realised that they were about to go bankrupt. So he spots this. He's got a, a very strategic ear for these type of things. And so he will be concerned at the very least. Troubled at best by the internal politics going on at Red Bull. And here's where he pops up at, at the airport, right? Now, you know, for a fact, let's try and connect the dots here. John Elkin, CEO of Ferrari, has just given Lewis Hamilton basically a blank check or you can eat ambassadorial role we will promote you and your altruistic activities your charitable donations anything you want lewis because we're keen to make this not just a sports car brand but a luxury brand a behemoth of a brand the symbiosis we've said already between lewis and scuderia ferrari is ridiculous Again, take anything that Mercedes have got to offer and times that by 10. And again, for me, if I'm reading into that, that's a signal of intent. No, a signal of ambition. So I think we should take this Adrian Newey to Ferrari thing deadly serious. I'm being honest with you. Now, a couple of years back, you heard me talk about the same with Lewis. If you read into the leaves, Lewis Hamilton had always said that he wanted to one day end his career potentially at Scuderia Ferrari. What has Adrian Newey said? Again, I will repeat for the avoidance of doubt, each and every single bloody time you talk to Adrian Newey, he's got three dying wishes that he wants to tick off in F1 before he leaves the sport at the ripe old age of 65 to work with Alonso, to work with Lewis and to work for the, the red car team. By moving to Ferrari, if indeed he does, and it would be 2026 because that's when his contract ends. If he does indeed move to Ferrari in 2026, he's nailing two of those. <gasps> Oh, the humanity. And there is something to be said for aerodynamic minds and challenge. Lest we forget, and I'm going to give you this as well, guys, because I think this is quite important if we're trying to roll forward, predict the future even. Over the past few months, increasingly, I keep hearing people say, well, you know what? Adrian contributes, but he's not the sole contributor. And I think that that diminishes the contribution of one Adrian Newey. Now, of course, he has a team around him, a team of minions that will support him and institute his ideas. But to say that he's not the fact controller per se, that he's not the man holding the red pen ultimately, I think is to do 
Adrian Newey, the goatiest aerodynamic mind in the business, a massive disservice. And I think Adrian Newey will be listening to that sort of stuff that Christian Horner keeps trotting out on many an occasions now. Max Verstappen keeps saying the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good that we've got Adrian, Max will say. But also, lest we forget that Adrian has a team around it. It's not just Adrian. We have a great team of aero boffins. Max said that over the past couple of weeks, and Adrian knew he would be listening to that. You know, I know, post the Japanese Grand Prix, he said something similar. Humble guy, you'll never hear him say anything different, but I know internally, Adrian will know the truth, that I am the aero MVP. Nobody has the length and breadth in this game, as far as ground effect in particular, that I do. That's what Adrian knew he would be saying. And I think you'll be peeved at that. And again, take this tidbit for the road as well. Initially, so this is this is Adrian Newey's second marriage. You'll, you'll remember. When Adrian went to IndyCar, there is a toll, and listen, table setting here, there is a toll that's, that's to be paid, a cost of being in an F1 team or any motorsport team, right? You've got to travel the world, etc., etc. And when he was younger, Adrian knew he lent into that. IndyCar was his first batch, right? His first lot. And owing to that travel, the extent of that travel, obviously based in North America and then flying back to Europe, etc., etc., Ultimately, his first marriage, he, he got divorced, didn't he? It didn't last, owing, per his book, in no small part to the extent and frequency of the bloody travel. Now, millions have said, many people have said, that the reason why he won't join Ferrari and that potentially Aston Martin might be favourites to poach Adrian New in 2026 is because of that travel. Maybe Adrian's missus doesn't want to move to Maranello. Maybe she's happy in Milton Keynes. Well, check this out. When people started talking about all this, oh, Adrian, he's got a team around him. He doesn't do everything stuff. Maybe, said Lewis Hamilton Evangelist, maybe Adrian Newey should go to Maranello. What did Adrian Newey's missus, who, by the way, is very visible on Twitter, and you guys can go and check my maths on this. What did Adrian Newey's wife do? She was liking these tweets. Read into that what you will then. No longer is the missus and keeping her happy a barrier to entry as far as ticking off one of his remaining bucket list being working with Lewis Hamilton and joining Scuderia Ferrari. Take that to the bank. 2026. It won't happen before. It will not happen before unless Ferrari writes both Red Bull and Christian Horner a very very big check. But rest assured you can take these rumours seriously. What was Adrian doing in Italy? Genuine question. Why was he there? What holiday in? In Bologna, behave yourself, NC Paddock, you're far too kind. One thing I've learned about Italian media, they love talking drama. I believe it when I see it. He will trade political headache for another in Maranello if he leaves. But you see, NC Paddock, Matthew B, I think you missed something. A, the report, remember I said at the outset, Automo Automotor und Sport is a very reputable publication. This hasn't come from Italian media. This is German. And most of the time when they pen a story, you can take that to the bank from history as a person who reports and loves F1 or has loved F1 and read Automotor and Sport as long as I can remember. And the while you're a legend. It's not the driver who dreamed to work for Scuderia Ferrari. Oof, it's not just the drivers and Lewis. You would say, I'm here for it, Noir. I'm here for it too. Can you imagine? Lewis and Newey and Charles. Oh, the humanity. The humanity. I think this could be real, I'll be honest with you. I think this could be the perfect storm. The combination of the wrangling and internal politicking at Red Bull. Adrian Newey having always wanted to work for Ferrari with Lewis Hamilton. He's 65 now. There are parallels between his decision making and one Lewis Hamilton at 65. You're getting it. How many years do you have left in F1? Five, ten, maybe max. You are getting to the tail end of your career, as is Lewis Hamilton. Are the stars not aligning, chat? I don't know. I think I'm trying to listen. I'd love to play devil's advocate here, but I think this might be real, genuinely. And sometimes in F1, there is no smoke without fire. No, I don't know. This could be, oh, 
so badly want it to be a real thing. Come on, Adrian Newey. Come on, John Alkin. Get get your checkbook out. Make this, make this real. And then they're on in. Is it not for Ravi's championship to lose, especially in 2026 with new rules and regulations? Now, I know there is more emphasis on the engine, but rumour has it that Ferrari and Mercedes will be at the forefront of that development curve. Red Bull with their, their Ford power unit may well struggle. And this is where the rumour of Max Verstappen looking at a different team came from in the first place, right? He won't leave before 2026 and nor will Adrian Newey. Again, remember, he's got 12 drivers championships, 13 constructors to his name. He wouldn't mind an extra two and two to put on that tally. Of course he won't, but they're, they're on after. They're after. Your guess is as good as mine. No further questions, Your Honour.